So again, when we're looking at elbow mobility, and we're looking at flexion and extension, what we want to do when we're looking at flexion for the humeral joint, all know humeral joint, it's a convex on concave surface, and it's a, so you have this ride, uh, glide and rock that's anterior. So you'll get the patient in a position where you can glide them and rock them. There's an element of traction to it as well, especially when you get to the end of range. So most of us know that. We learned that in PT school. The joint that sometimes gets forgotten is the radial humeral joint. So the radial capitular joint, as it, as it glides, it has that same glide. What's nice about it, if the patient's blocked in flexion, you can actually get on that joint and mobilize it. So you can do a mobilization with movement for the, that joint, or you can get into this position, and because it's an anterior glide, you can get into that position and manipulate it. So you could do a manipulation like that, and then do a mobilization with movement to help out with flexion. So the glide is going to be in the same direction because we have a convex surface, whether it's the, the radius on the humerus or the radial head on the humerus as it's going through, or the ulna. It's the same kind of glide, and that's why we have it written out in that way. So that's a nice way if you're struggling with flexion. And the opposite is true when you're going into extension. Remember, the combined motion that you have, you're reaching, so this is the combined motion that has flexion, you're eating. So you have pronation and supination as part of it. So that's part number one. Part number two, we'll be looking at an ulnar abduction lesion patient falls on an outstretched hand. They have an increased carrying angle. So what happens is that the ulna is in abduction and it has more of a medial glide. So what we would like to do is create a lateral glide on the ulna. So I'm gonna, you can do it within supine or we can do it in sitting. I want an outstretched hand or they were scooping ice cream like my patient and they have an increased carrying angle. With that, it puts a lot of stress on the lateral elbow, and it can change the alignment between the radius and ulna and affect the hand and wrist as well. So we want to restore that angle. So if they're stuck in abduction, we want to create an A deduction. So what we want to do is they have this medial glide going on. We want to create a lateral glide. So I can get him set up here so that I can, this is abduction, I can do adduction, and I can do a push like that. If I don't feel like I can control this well enough, he can lay down, and this is like one of my preferred ways to do it, because that's abduction. I can control the adduction a little bit better here because I can get him locked in right here. When I do the manipulation, it's across the joint. So I am doing this and pushing that way. So I'm lining it up and pushing it that way. And for the people who've had it stuck for a while, there will be an audible of some sort. With lateral elbow pain or lateral epicondylitis, it's usually extensor carpi radialis brevis. So when they do finger extension, they'll be tender along that lateral part of the humerus. It's either tenomuscular or tenoperiosteal. So sometimes you'll come up here and you'll palpate and they'll say, yeah, no, nah, I don't feel that. Well, that is on the tenomuscular area. If they said they did have pain, you would friction, 
that spot until it was numb. Five minutes sometimes, sometimes a little bit longer. Notice how I'm reinforcing my fingers and doing the frictions. If it's tenoperiosteal, it's a little tricky because you supinate the hand and you palpate near this anterior surface of the humerus, so it's slippery. So it's right embedded under that muscle there. You have to almost push it out from the side. How do you like that? That's great. <laughs> so you can get right on it. But if you're, if you're off, you get that slipperiness just because the nerve is right close to there, so you just want to be careful. So when you're going tenoperiosteal, you just want to make sure you get right on that. But it should reproduce the patient came in, what the patient came in to see you for. It shouldn't create new pain for the patient. So when you do the test for resisted testing, that's their pain. Through palpation, you want to reproduce that pain. The tenoperiosteal, because the vascular supply isn't as good, it takes a little bit longer. But I tell you, if you friction that area and work on the loading strategies, a la Cook, Jill Cook, so that doesn't mean you're doing eccentrics, it means you have the patient doing loaded isometrics to that tendon, it works really well. I'll have them do a combination of extension with the, and then we'll progress to the hammer, but they'll do an isometric with the hammer as opposed to just doing um, eccentrics and it works really well. So some frictions and loading work well for that. So in review, elbow flexion with rock and glide, radial capitular joint, abduction, ulnar abduction, there's a too much medial glide, so we want to adduct and laterally glide. And then we did frictions.